What up, MNR family? It's your girl, Mag. It's Ross. But we're back with another reaction video. Let me know what we got today. Today we're back with more Mr. Ballin. The title of this is called Someone You Know Was On This Plane. But look, man, we drop multiple new videos back to back every single day. So if there's anything that y'all want to see us react to on the channel, man, just drop them things in the comments. But look, man, if you're new to the channel, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. But look, man, let's get to this video. Believable, it's shocking, it's a whole bunch of things. But what you'll remember from this story is the twist at the very end. But before we get into today's story, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you've come to the right place because that's all we do and we upload three or four times every week. So if that's of interest to you, please open all the cans of tuna fish inside the like button's pantry and then release a gang of feral cats into their house. <laughs> and then release a gang of... <laughs> and then release a gang of vicious feral cats inside their house. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. All right, let's get into today's story. On June 25th, 1950, the Korean War broke out between the North Koreans and the South Koreans. Just two days after this war had begun, the United States formally entered the conflict by sending troops to aid the South Koreans. Shortly after this, the United States enacted a military draft. A military draft is the forced enlistment of civilians into the military. In the Korean War, the way Americans were chosen was in a lottery, and if their name was called, they would have to stop whatever they were doing in the civilian world and immediately go serve their country, and if they refused, they would go to jail. An 18-year-old high school dropout nicknamed Samson was living with his family in Seattle, Washington when he found out he had been drafted. While military service was not something Samson was considering for his future, he accepted his fate with grace, and before long, he was making his way to Fort Ord in Northern California to begin his military training. But after training, when Samson was now officially a soldier in the army, he was not sent to Korea to fight in the war. Instead, he was ordered to stay at Fort Ord and be the lifeguard for their pool. It's unclear how Samson felt about this, but regardless, he did his duty, and he stayed at this pool, and he minded the folks who went swimming, and then at night and on the weekends, he would earn some extra cash by being a bouncer at a local bar. A year later, Samson was still working at the Fort Ord pool when he decided to take some time off and go back home to Seattle and see his family and see his girlfriend. As a military member, Samson was able to fly for free on any military flight, so long as he was in uniform. And so Samson packed up his things, he threw on his uniform, and he made his way over to the Fort Ord Airport, where he hopped on a small military plane, and he flew to Seattle. A few days later, on September 30th, 1951, Samson said goodbye to his family and to his girlfriend, and then he put his uniform back on and made his way to the Seattle airport. When he got there, he saw there was only one military plane that was flying from Seattle all the way down to Fort Ord. And this plane was a World War II era dive bomber that only had enough space for one person, the pilot. Samson had to get back to Fort Ord that night because the following day he had work and in the army you can't just not show up for work. But Samson didn't have enough money to buy a civilian plane ticket to take a civilian flight down to Fort Ord. So he was in a tough spot. And so he approaches this pilot of this dive bomber plane and he says, hey, you know, can I just cram into your radar compartment in the back of your plane? And the pilot, whose name was Anderson, immediately said, no, that's a terrible idea. It's not meant for passengers. It's barely big enough to fit inside of. You could get badly hurt in there. But Samson was adamant that he had to get back that night, that he'd be in so much trouble if he didn't. And he kind of appealed to Anderson and said, look, you're in the military. You get it. I have to get back there tonight. Can you please make an exception and just let me hitch a ride in the back of your plane? And so finally, against his better judgment, Anderson caves and he says, okay, Samson, you can come with me. And so a little bit before 4 p.m. that afternoon, Samson eagerly went around to the side of the plane. He opened up a side hatch and he crawled inside of this very tight radar compartment. And once he was tucked up inside, Anderson walked around and he closed the hatch behind him. And then Anderson got in the cockpit and began preparing the plane for takeoff. A few minutes later, the pair was careening down the runway. And right as the plane began to experience lift and was going up into the air, the side hatch of the radar compartment where Samson was 
suddenly flew open. The big issue with this now open door in the radar compartment was not that Samson, like in the movies, would get sucked out the store out to his death. Although if he wasn't careful, he totally could fall out of the door. No, the real problem with this now open door had to do with oxygen levels. At their cruising altitude, where the majority of their flight would be spent, there wasn't enough oxygen in the air to sustain human life. And so as soon as Anderson powered up that plane and began preparing it for takeoff, he began pumping oxygen into the cockpit and also into the radar compartment space. This is done specifically to compensate for the lack of oxygen up at that cruising altitude. But with Samson's door now wide open, all that extra oxygen that was coming into that space to keep him alive is now just being sucked right out the door into the atmosphere, which meant if Samson couldn't find a way to shut that door, he would eventually pass out and suffocate to death. Samson, who was fully aware of this fact, immediately jumped into action by anchoring his feet and legs around the stanchion in the middle of this compartment space. And once he was fairly secure, he began extending his upper body out of the plane to try to grab onto the handle to try to shut it. But once he was holding onto that door handle, he's now halfway out of the plane. He he could not get it to shut. The wind was so strong, it was pinning the door open. And so for the next several minutes, Samson desperately is trying to get this door shut, but it's not working. And so eventually he retreated back into the plane and went all the way to the very back of the radar compartment space and tucked himself up behind some equipment. Because this was not an area where passengers were supposed to be, there was no way to communicate with the pilot. He could not tell Anderson that he was dying back here. And so he just sat there and prayed. <laughs> While Samson was dealing with this open door crisis, Anderson was dealing with a crisis of his own. At some point after takeoff, he looked down at his gauges and he realized a terrible mistake had been made. There wasn't enough fuel to get to Fort Ord and where he was discovering it, where he was out over the water, there wasn't enough fuel to even turn around and go back to Seattle. And so Anderson grabs his radio and he tries to call out to these surrounding airports to see if there's anywhere he can just emergency land this plane, but all he hears is silence. It would turn out his radio equipment just happened to fail right at this moment. And what also happened to fail right at that moment was Anderson's oxygen supply. It had nothing to do with Samson and the open door. Anderson just also suddenly was without oxygen. And so Anderson knew he had to get to a lower altitude as fast as possible because he would eventually pass out and crash the plane. And so he went into a very steep dive and began going down and realized he needed to try to land this plane in the ocean now. There was no way he could get to an airport. And so he's burning down towards the water. And as they're coming down in altitude, there was more oxygen in the air. And so Samson, who had eventually passed out from a lack of oxygen, is suddenly revived with all this additional oxygen as they're going down. And so Samson comes to and he looks and the door is still wide open. And all he can see is the Pacific Ocean burning up at him. He only had a few seconds to grab onto the stanchion in the middle of the space he's in before they impacted the water. Miraculously, Samson survived the impact, but immediately he was faced with another life and death situation. Because this door was wide open, the freezing cold water began pouring inside, flooding the space. And so Samson tried to swim his way out, but the power of this water coming in was too strong. And so he had to wait until the space completely flooded before he swam out and then swam up to the surface. Once he got to the surface, he's looking around and the water's incredibly choppy and it's very foggy. He can barely see anything. He's looking around for Anderson, not really sure what happened to him. And he looks down the plane towards the front of the plane and he sees Anderson climbing out of the cockpit. He looks badly beaten up, but he's alive. He's okay. And so Samson yells to him and the two men link up and they're able to pull two life rafts out of the plane. And so both men, they get into each of their rafts right as this plane sinks down below the surface. And so Anderson and Samson begin looking around around wondering what they're going to do, but it's so foggy, they can't see land in any direction. They can barely see 10 feet away from themselves. And so Anderson thought they landed maybe two or three miles off the coast of California, but they weren't really sure. So Anderson pulled out his compass. He looked east and said, let's just start paddling. The men had crashed about two miles off the coast of Point Reyes, California, which is this big protected shoreline that's about 150 miles north of Fort Ord. And this particular stretch of water that these two men had found themselves in was a known breeding ground for great white sharks. So the two men, they got their compass and they're trying to swim as fast as they can to the east, but they're not seeing any land. The fog hasn't let up at all. And then eventually it got dark. And as soon as it got dark, the water got choppier and choppier until at one point, Sam 
Samson actually was launched out of his raft into the water. He turned around and saw his raft, but it was being pulled away by a current faster than he could swim to it. And so Samson yells out for Anderson, who sees him in the water. Anderson tries his best to paddle over and save Samson, but the current was too strong. And before long, Samson watched as Anderson just disappeared into the fog. Now, Samson was all alone in the middle of the night. He couldn't see anything. There's no land anywhere. He doesn't have the compass. Anderson had the compass, so he has no idea which direction is what. He's in a shark breeding ground, and now he doesn't have his life raft. And so Samson did the only thing he could do, which was pick a direction that he believed was east and start swimming. And so Samson is swimming in this pitch black water. He can't see anything around him. And all he's probably thinking about is how any minute now, I'm gonna run out of energy and I'm gonna sink down and I'm gonna drown or I'm gonna get attacked by sharks or some combination of the two. But miraculously, after about an hour of swimming in some direction, he broke through the fog and he saw way off in the distance was a light on what looked like dry land. And so he has this sudden burst of energy and he swims as hard and as fast as he possibly can. A couple of times he gets pulled under by by rip currents and he nearly drowns, but eventually he gets to the sandy shores of Point Reyes. It's believed he swam approximately one or two miles after being dumped out of the boat. As he was pulling himself out of the water and collapsed on the beach, he had given everything to that swim. Had he been in the water for even a few more minutes, it's very likely he would have drowned. Unable to stand from pure exhaustion, Samson just began slowly crawling up the beach towards this light he had seen as he was swimming. And it would turn out this light was on the outside of this building that was owned by a radio station. And so Samson is crawling and periodically puking out seawater. And finally, after about 30 or 45 minutes, he gets to the steps of this building. He crawls up the steps and he pounds on the door. And by this point, he's hypothermic, he's in shock, He's about to die if he doesn't get any help. And luckily, there's someone inside of this building. They open it up, they see Samson. They don't know what's going on, but they pick him up, they pull him inside, they wrap him in a blanket, and they try to ask him, you know, what happened? What's going on? Why are you here? But Samson was too cold to even speak, so he just sat there and shook. And so finally, this employee just called the Coast Guard that had a station very close to where they were. And a few minutes later, the Coast Guard shows up, they take Samson, and they rush him to their station house where they were able to give him medical treatment, which saved his life. It was also at this Coast Guard station station where Samson was reunited with Anderson, who had also managed to make his way to shore alive. Samson would go on to serve for two more years in the army. The entire time was spent as a lifeguard at the Fort Ord pool. Then in 1953, after the Korean War ended, Samson's mandatory service came to an end and he was honorably discharged. Samson would go on to become one of the most successful and well-known actors and producers of all time. He has won hundreds of big awards, including four Academy Awards and four Golden Globe Awards. Samson's real name is Clint Eastwood. So that's going to do it, guys. If you found the secret in today's episode, let us know in the comments section what it is and where you found it. So give us the timestamp. And if you're the first to do that, we'll pin you at the top of the comments section. If you got something out of today's episode and you haven't done this already, please open all the cans of tuna fish in the like buttons pantry and then proceed to let loose a vicious gang of feral cats in their house. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly three or four video uploads. We are now selling merchandise, so if you want to buy flannels and hats and a whole bunch of stuff, go to shopmrballin.com. Also, go follow our shop's Instagram page for all upcoming deals and promotions. The username is shopmrballin. If you want to get in touch with me, you can direct message me on Instagram or on Twitter. My username for both platforms is the same. It's johnballin416. I also have a ton of content over on TikTok, where my username is Mr. Ballin. We also have a second YouTube channel called Mr. Ballin Shorts, where we post random short videos and lost episodes. If you have a story suggestion, please submit it to our subreddit just called Mr. Ballin. It's linked in the description below. So whether I see you on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Reddit, YouTube, or some combination, just know that I really appreciate your support. And until next time, that's going to do it. See ya. Mr. Baller, he tell good stories, man. Shout out, Mr. Baller, yeah. man. This this is a good one, man. It's tight. They really made it to the shore. They did. That's that's amazing. That's, that's a tight. blessing. That's a blessing. Yeah. That's tight. Yeah. And then he was like a movie actor and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, he was director he and stuff. That. That's tight. That's but, a blessing. But look, man, if there are any other videos that y'all want to see us react to on the channel, man, just drop them things down. <laughs>
the channel, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. But man, we catch you on the next video.